Asian carp are wreaking havoc on rivers across Indiana, most recently in Monroe County. The invasive species has been detected in Salt Creek, sparking fears that the fish will make their way into nearby Lake Monroe. The Department of Natural Resources is alerting fishermen to try and prevent that from happening. But as Barbara Brozier reports, if Asian carp do end up in Lake Monroe, there's not much the state can do to get rid of them. When Brendan Kearns takes people out on the Wabash River, he has one word of advice. <laughs> Duck. You can be having a peaceful moment on the river and all of a sudden you get smacked by a 12 pound fish upside the head. Kearns is pretty good at getting this kind of Asian carp, called silver carp, to put on a show. The theory is they jump out of the water when they're bothered by unusual vibrations, like the motor on his boat. What I'm doing now is I'm irritating them. I've got the motor up a little bit, and I'm making them more nervous than what they naturally are. It can be easy to feel on edge while on the Wabash with Kearns. Fish are flying past or into your head, and occasionally one ends up in the boat. That's why he doesn't bring many people out here anymore. I love taking people out on the river, um, but I have to be very careful. So we've had a couple situations where we've been on this boat running about 40 to 50 mile an hour, and a silver carp would jump and go right past your head. <laughs> oh my God! Several years ago, he captured this video of hundreds of carp jumping out of the Wabash at once. Now imagine this happening somewhere like Lake Monroe. I think silver carp could kill recreation on all those lakes. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources is worried about that possibility too. They recently discovered Asian carp in Salt Creek just below the Lake Monroe Dam. And it's not the first time. We've had uh, reports of Asian carp actually jumping and anglers from that have been fishing the tailwaters have actually sent us videos as early as 2010. There hasn't been much success with containing Asian carp in Indiana's rivers, and scientists are still struggling to figure out the best way to do so. Other states have installed control mechanisms like electrical barriers to try and prevent the carp from spreading. One of the areas of research in my lab is looking at trying to improve electrical barrier technologies uh, because there are some issues with the current configuration in terms of uh, fish potentially being able to get uh, through and around that. If the invasive species was to make its way into Lake Monroe, it could be there to stay. Asian carp reproduce rapidly, and because the reservoir serves as Bloomington's water supply, the solutions would be limited. You can't drain the lake because it's the water supply for Bloomington, and just the sheer size of it, and the purpose of the reservoir is for flood control. So to to uh, try to fix a fisheries problem is a uh, fairly low priority. There is some good news. Asian carp haven't been detected in any of the state's reservoirs, and it would be hard for them to make their way into those large bodies of water on their own. Right now, the dams seem to be keeping them out of reservoirs for the most part. Goforth says the biggest threat actually comes from anglers. It's hard to distinguish young Asian carp from popular bait fish, so people could mistakenly introduce the species into lakes. A state law aims to reduce those chances by prohibiting the possession of live gizzard shad at many of Indiana's lakes. Sometimes it's hard for experts to tell the difference when they're really small fish. Um, and so the best thing to do is just not to do any kind of transfer of fish among water bodies ever. Because Asian carp is still relatively new to the U.S., Goforth says it's not clear what impact the fish have on the rivers they take over. There are so many factors at play in a river ecosystem that it's hard to tell if deteriorating quality of plant life and other fish are directly caused by the presence of Asian carp. There's no sort of silver, silver bullet at this point saying if the carp are here, this is what they will do. Um, that's sort of a holy grail, I guess, at this point in trying to do research. Back on the Wabash in Terre Haute, the fish haven't stopped Kearns from spending time on his beloved river. And he has his own ways of learning to cope with the carp. What I like to do in areas like this, I like to get them to jump and they get stuck in the trees. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Barbara Brozier. Now you can actually eat the fish, but they're bony and don't have much meat, so they haven't become popular in the U.S.